The Royal Court announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is leaving Bahrain tomorrow to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, leading Bahrain's delegation to the Fourth Arab South America Summit to be held in Riyadh on the 10th and 11th of November. The participation comes in answer to an invitation His Majesty received from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Majesty the King held a meeting with the Jordanian monarch, King Abdullah ibn al-Hussein II, where they discussed their country's historic brotherly relations and means of bolstering them for the interest of both kingdoms and peoples. His Majesty welcomed the Jordanian monarch to Bahrain, which reflects the strong relations between the two countries and their keen desire to continue consultation and cooperation between them. He expressed pride in their relations, which goes back long in history and based on joint coordination and understanding. The two leaders affirmed their keen desire to further develop relations to a higher level. His Majesty loaded the honorable stance of Jordan under the leadership of King Abdullah ibn al-Hussein towards Bahrain and its support for Arab just causes as well as enhancing joint Arab action. They also discussed regional and international developments, coordinating their stances and affirming on Arab solidarity to face various challenges which require further consultation and coordination. The discussion included the efforts exerted to combat terrorism and extremism in order to safeguard the security and stability of the region and its people. Earlier, His Majesty the King received the Jordanian monarch of Jordan upon his arrival to the kingdom on a brotherly visit. Welcoming the monarch were also His Majesty the King's sons. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudaybiya Palace the Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Salah, and several MPs in the presence of former Representative Speaker Khalifa, or rather Khalifa Dahrani, and senior state officials. The Prime Minister said that attempts to destabilize the region will not stop after each conspiracy is thwarted, stressing that such challenges impose commitment to preserve internal security through cooperation between the government and the representative of the people. He said the global economic situation requires Bahrain to focus on developing national investment ability, which needs legislative support from the representative and Shura councils. He also said the national economic and developmental achievements are the outcome of everyone's cooperation, as it must be enhanced based on an economic infrastructure. The Prime Minister commended the role of the representative and Shura councils in the political life and in supporting the development march led by the government through legislative 
legislations and laws supporting it. He stressed that the fields of governmental parliamentarian cooperation is being consolidated due to the mutual desire to increase national accomplishments.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Kudaibia Palace today. The cabinet reviewed the economic situation amid global economic challenges and their impact. His Royal Highness gave his directives to take the necessary economic and financial measures to safeguard the achievements and continue speedy developments, mainly keeping the inflation down, creating more jobs and implementing key projects. He directed the executive committees led by the Crown Prince ministries and government bodies to follow up on the recommendations of the National Audit Annual Report of 2014 to 15. He emphasized that the government is committed to ensuring that public funds are used efficiently for the best interest of the citizens. He expressed appreciation to the Interior Ministry for its continuous efforts and security operations to combat terrorism, which recently resulted in the arrest of 47 suspects who planned to carry out terror attacks in Bahrain. Security forces also seized highly explosive materials and firearms stored in some residential areas. The Premier also directed the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs to prepare a report on the implementation of the Government Action Plan and was updated on the developments regarding cases of cholera in Bahrain. He stressed the importance of the Ministry of Health efforts to put in place precautionary measures to prevent the spread of all infectious diseases and emphasized the importance of ensuring vaccinations are available in all health centers and the need to increase public awareness on measures to avoid infection. He then commissioned a report from the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Rationalizing Expenditure, Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, on temporary discontinuing bonuses for employees working in companies partially owned by government. The Cabinet decided to freeze the award of bonus to head and members of the Government Council's committees and companies with 50% government stake. The Prime Minister tasked the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Expenditure Control to come up with the necessary procedure to execute such action. The cabinet was then briefed on a report submitted by the Deputy Premier Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on the Invest in Bahrain Forum 2015, which was held under the patronage of the Prime Minister. His Royal Highness praised the recently held Bahrain International Property Exhibition, an annual event that provides a forum for real estate professionals to exchange expertise and Bahraini property companies to present the latest development projects to investors. He welcomed Bahrain's election as Vice President of the General Conference of UNESCO for the second consecutive year and affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to supporting all UNESCO educational programs, particularly the Education for All program, as well as ICT development and programs that promote the principles of coexistence and tolerance. He also directed the relevant authorities to review the Kingdom's regulatory legislation that affects local businessmen in order to encourage investment for Bahrain's economic development. The Cabinet approved a memorandum on the ratification of the amended protocol of the Marrakesh Agreement establishing the World Trade Organization, which relates to further facilitating export and export operation at customs ports. It reviewed a memorandum on an MOU between the governments of Bahrain and France related to the Alliance Française French Learning Center in Bahrain. The memorandum aims to further incorporate and promote French language and literature in Bahraini schools and encourage exchange visits by scientists researchers and students. It also aims to provide more scholarship opportunities for Bahraini students to study in France. The Cabinet referred the memorandum to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet also took note of a number of draft proposals by the Legislative Authority in order to take the necessary measures. After the cabinet meeting, the Minister of Information Affairs and Representative and Shura Council Affairs Ais al Hamadi held a press conference outlining the issues discussed. He affirmed that the Ministry of Health is taking the necessary procedures to prevent the cholera virus and providing all kinds of necessary measures and communicate with officials of the World Health Organization for further cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the Arab League's Council Ministerial Meeting in its extraordinary session in Riyadh to discuss the developments in Palestine. The Arab League commended the organized terrorism, or condemned rather, the organized terrorism adopted by Israel and its war crimes and affirmed the illegality of the settlements built on Palestinian lands. They warned that continuous Israeli violations could lead to an end of any political settlement for the Palestinian problem. Based 
based on the two-state solution. The Arab League urged the Security Council to implement the Fourth Geneva Convention to the occupied Palestinian territory and to accelerate efforts regarding the protection of Al-Aqsa Mosque and to stop all Israeli violations. It also called on the Palestinian people to unify their stances through forming a national unity government and hold the general elections in order to confront the Israeli threat which aims to target its unity. It also affirms its support to the Palestinian leadership in order to achieve an independent state with Jerusalem as its capital. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated this evening in the Foreign Minister's preparatory meeting for the Fourth Arab and South America Leaders' Meeting to be held tomorrow in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. During the meeting, the Foreign Ministers reviewed cooperation relations in political, economic and cultural fields and means of bolstering such relations. Also discussed were the latest regional and international developments. This in addition to reviewing Riyadh draft declaration, which will culminate the fourth summit between the Arab and South American leaders. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister deputized his advisor, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa al Khalifa, and Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid al Khalifa to attend the reception ceremony held by the Russian ambassador to Bahrain, Vagif Garaev, marking 25 years of diplomatic relations between both countries. The ceremony was held at the Sheraton Hotel in the presence of senior kingdom officials and diplomatic corps. Both Sheikh Salman bin Khalid and Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid conveyed the greetings of the Prime Minister to Russia and its people, wishing them further progress. They lauded the development of Bahraini-Russian relations and their keen desire to further bolster them for the interest of the two countries and peoples. For his part, the Russian ambassador thanked the Prime Minister for his keen desire to enhance cooperation between the two friendly countries, affirming Russia's interest to further boost bilateral relations in various fields.